construction uh, expert, um, you know, run, but I've, you know, the, he'll give us a list and these are the price points and these are the name recognized things. And so, you know, like there's certain things that everyone knows. Viking, everyone knows Viking appliances. Sub-Zero, everyone knows that a Sub-Zero refrigerator and freezer combo is going to be top notch. Um, those are a couple that just jump to mind. And there's other ones that come from Europe, types of granite, types of marble that are sourced from Europe that people who are into these things really recognize immediately. I wouldn't necessarily because I have too many children, so I get stuff that's durable. <laughs> so, but um, but yeah, we I, I rely on our construction guy to kind of give us our options. And and sometimes when you're choosing between uh, luxury name recognized brands or finishings, um, another question is, you know, is this stuff available now? What's the timeline on it? What's the deliverables? Where are we going to source it? And so these things also factor in. And so getting a high quality product, but one that you can deliver right away and at a great price point. Um, maybe we have relationships, maybe our construction guys relationships on some of these things. And so there's a number of factors that go in there, but you want to, you want to provide the product that will sell at a price that makes the most sense. And, uh, and you can deliver uh, when you say you can. So. I mean, I don't know that that necessarily we've been struck with that misfortune, but I have seen it anecdotally and talked to other people and even talked to our sales partners when they say, you know, if you price it out of the market, you're going to have a real difficult selling. And there's people that put out there have, who there's builders who love to build amazing products. It's like a, it's like to their legacy, right? I, I built this amazing thing, but if it doesn't sell, it sits on the market forever, then you know, was it worth it? And so we're very sensitive to that. You know, you want, you put your name on something and you're the developer and you're the builder, you want it to be awesome. But if you have, but if the land that you have and what you're working with and what the, what the buyers, uh, what their profile looks like, sometimes you just have to go with that. And that's, in fact, that's, that's the only way you can really do something, like especially if you're a fiduciary of other people's money, you're raising money, you got to spend it in the best way. You can't do a testament to yourself. You can't build something that other people will walk by and say, yeah, you know, that was Wolfgram that built that. Isn't that amazing? doesn't help if it sits, you know, 30% occupied for, for years. And so, yeah, you can definitely mess that up. And so that's, again, how do you get that data? How do you know? And then you really have to rely on the professionals, the people that are out there selling every single day, walking through units, similar, comparable units every day, talking to people who are closing those sales and what the sales velocity looks like. That's the real data. That's where the rubber meets the road. And so we rely heavily on those types of market analysis and reports. Thank you.